that was reported in Ash that the that there was oh, it looks like we're missing something here. Uh, the French study, well, it's such that you can't see it very well. Uh, the French study uh, reported a uh, frequency of non-plasma cell malignancy of 5.5% in the uh, patients who were randomized uh, to the lenalidomide maintenance compared to 1% for those on the placebo study. In the second study, the CALGB study that I just described to you, the frequency of non-plasma cell malignancy was a 6.5% with lenalidomide maintenance uh, compared to 2.6% uh, for those on placebo. And then in MM015, an Italian study that was, uh, <clears throat> that was reported by uh, Antonio Palumbo, Again, 3% uh, uh, of the patients who were on malphalan, prednisone, bilinamide uh, had uh, a uh, uh, non-plasma cell tumor compared to 1.3% for the placebo. Now, these numbers I want to emphasize are preliminary, and way down deep in my heart, I'm really not uh, very impressed with these differences here because I am concerned with the quality of follow-up of the placebo arm. Uh, in all three studies, this was not a part of the prescribed uh, study. When the patient uh, uh, relapsed, they went off, uh, uh, off the study, and uh, I suspect that the follow-up was not as accurate in the patients who were on placebo as those who continued on lenalidomide because those continuing on lenalidomide had to come back at regular intervals to see their physician. And so any solid tumor would be picked up. The placebo pa patient, by and large, would go back to their community uh, in both France, Italy, and in the U.S and uh, probably, very likely, not followed as closely. Uh, the treating physician for those patients may well see an elderly gentleman who developed a carcinoma of the prostate. Well, so what? Uh, this is common in older men and not bother to uh, report it. Now, however, when one looks at uh, maintenance, I think there are a number of things that one must take into consideration before uh, blindly uh, going ahead with a maintenance regimen based upon progression-free survival or time to progression. One really needs to see a meaningful uh, overall survival benefit in these patients. Uh, not just a p-value difference, but a, a real uh, difference. The other uh, consideration is the risk of second cancers, which I just uh, uh, went over a couple of minutes ago. But another uh, thing that we need to think about is the possibility of unforeseen events that might occur with a complex drug such as lenalidomide so-called immunomodulator. Uh, uh, I must confess that uh, it took us 12 years before we realized that melphalan had uh, uh, undesirable side effects, that is leading to myelodysplasia or acute leukemia in up to 5% of the patients who were treated with that drug. Uh, when we presented the first four cases of uh, of myelodysplasia and acute leukemia in patients who had been treated with malphalan, it was not uh, uh, accepted by everyone uh, simply because I think these patients didn't live long enough to develop uh, 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 myelodysplastic changes. So we must be alert for that. 
The other thing that comes to mind is that uh, fludarabine has uh, been used uh, commonly uh, in the treatment of Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, and it wasn't until a couple of years ago that uh, increased numbers of patients have developed acute leukemia, uh, uh, presumably from the fludarabine, and others have developed a, uh, uh, a uh, aggressive lymphoma. Patients on uh, continual lenalidomide do need to see their patient, uh, need to see their physician on a regular basis, have blood counts done, because lenalidomide does produce uh, can, uh, leukopenia and thrombocytopenia, and the dose must be modified. Uh, patient's uh, quality of life may be reduced by having to see their physicians on a regular uh, basis, and also patients who are on lenalidomide uh, not uncommonly uh, complain of uh, weakness and fatigue. <clears throat> There's also uh, a risk of, of developing resistant uh, myeloma, the patient who is on maintenance does have a residual clone of myeloma uh, in the vast majority of patients, and exposure of this small clone to a drug continuously may well lead to resistance. And then there is another factor that must be taken into consideration, and that is the cost of lenalidomide at approximately $100,000 per year. So I think that uh, uh, before just uh, willy-nilly uh, placing patients uh, on uh, maintenance therapy that we need to have first of all the data and take into consideration uh, these features that you see here. Now there may well be a subset of patients with multiple myeloma, those high-risk patients who do benefit from maintenance therapy, but we still don't know that. 